All right, so today is rendering. So this is where we're going to take the picture, our draw, our model and inventor, and we're going to make it look more realistic. So we're going to put it, figure out a way to make it look like it's already done, like it's already made, show it off. Why would we want to do that? For presentation. Yeah, presentation or trying to sell it. Yeah, promotions. So you can start promoting your product before you start making it. Um, has anyone seen Kickstarter? No. <clears throat> so this is a website for people that want to start um, uh, start some kind of project. So. Project, you make a video about what the project is, figure out how much money you're going to need to get production started, and then people pledge money at different things and at different rates. You say what they're going to get for that. So they're going to get one of your things plus whatever. Um, and then after you, if you reach the goal, then you get the money. And then you have to start making it and give it away. Uh, if you don't reach the goal, then it's just kind of gone. Uh, but a lot of these been. Actual prototypes made already. Some of them just show you, show it to you with uh, just a rendering, and some you can't tell. Like that is that a photo? Prototypes. Oh, that's cool though. That is kind of cool. Some rendering. Cool. And, and he's raised nine hundred forty-two thousand dollars. He only needed. And he only wanted fifteen. Because so many. Because he had thirteen thousand people said that they wanted some. Uh, Two thousand pledged twenty-five bucks. Five thousand pledged fifty bucks. Forty-three pledged seventy bucks. Thirteen ninety eight. The one I wanted anodized. So this is a way. If you have an idea, you want to start marketing it. You can do it before you even have something. I've seen ones where they had just the renderings. So it's actually almost like selling your product in a way, but yeah. you don't have to have the risk of if it flops. Yeah, because that because you can put in you include in that prototyping costs, um, setting up product so. Um, cost to make molds, cost to start production, um, all that can be included in there. And kind of most of them I've seen, as they're starting to get bids, they start to do some of the rapid prototyping and things like that. Only they're paying 50 bucks a cubic inch for rapid prototyping, where you guys pay five bucks a cubic inch. So um, <clears throat> that's out there. And when you get to the 35 class, the the, the design project. Yeah, from scratch. You could take your design project and put it on there while you're in the class, if you want to continue to take it all the way out. So that, that's something I'm going to, to encourage. Might as well make money off your ideas, right? So, um, so in order to do that, most people don't want to just see that. 
they want to see what it's really going to look like um, in a more real situation. Right, so. Is there a snow shovel? What? Is there a snow shovel with it? No. The shelf. Uh, right here. And my little piece of wood kept falling off. Yeah. The double stick tape sucks. <laughs> and so I made a little shelf right here that I'm just going to screw into the side of it. When did you do that? When did you make that? Thursday. Thursday. Um, so here's some examples of some renderings. That that's old school. That's <laughs> and that took that was done like in '99, and that took like an hour to render. But now things like that oh, render pretty quick, <clears throat> and so you can you can do kind of a little basic rendering by exporting it and going to Photoshop and coloring it, or using the programs to, to add all the colors and the effects and everything. Um, so, some examples. <clears throat> so, we're going to go over the basics of rendering um, in Inventor. Because Inventor has its built-in rendering. But then also, the, the 10 class next, mender, next semester is all about rendering in 3D Max, which is a program specifically for rendering and animation. Um, so, in order to get to rendering, we're going go to go to Environments. And we're going to go to Inventor Studio. <clears throat> so this kind of gives you a little, that's if you want to do an animation. So here you've got kind of the basic settings. So we want to render this image. We want to do the last rendering we did. We want to render an animation. And rendering is actually the process of making it do the math, figure out how the material is going to go on to our part. <clears throat> um, so we have the scene, which includes the surface style. So what's it going to look like? Do we have a way already that we know of to change what it looks like? By changing the color of the... Yeah, how do I change the color of that? Properties. Properties, right? I go into my... There. I can also come up here to the top. Right now it says as material. I can override it. So I can say, no, I want that to look like cast aluminum. But let's say I want this top surface here to look like machined aluminum. So if I click on that surface and I right click, and I go to properties, and I can tell that I want it to be aluminum machine. Machine marks here, and on the bottom we've got all the casting marks. <clears throat> so we can go through there. Do it. If we go to surface styles here, now I'm in the aluminum cast. Here's kind of the colors it's using. If it's got some shininess. This diffuse map, that's what it's going to use. So if there wasn't a diffuse map, it'd use these colors. Because there's a diffuse map, that's the, the image that's going to show on, this, on the surface. <clears throat> I can change the scale of it. Let me see if 
yet. Really drop the scale up here. You make it smaller. Now you can't see it. And I can also rotate it. So if I went to the machine one, and change the angle of it. Or if you want that to be a little bigger. This one's not very good because you can see that there's repetition in it. Good patterns, you can't really tell the repetition as much. <coughs> and the bump map, that's the texture of it. So on this one, there's only a couple lines right here. That's because it's kind of smooth and then that's on some lines. If I go to the cast. Okay. Why isn't it? it should have some up on that. I guess none of these have. big texture on them, and so that'll actually change how things are up and down. These should have been a little bit too. These are pretty, pretty flat. It's like this, this casting, this, this aluminum casting is pretty smooth, but this, this one's more of a rough one, so it's got some texture on it. That you can see on the preview, maybe on your skin you can see it better, but there's a lot more texture to it. Surface or the lighting style. So, how do you want it to light this this thing? Uh, so, you can see right now this basic lighting. So we've got four lights, and usually three lights is the optimum. Um, so three there. That one has a lot more, um, but these are all different intensities. If you looked at it. So that one's like really low, that's really low, that's low, that's a bit higher, that one's pretty low. And so those aren't all full intensity, just kind of to get lighting from all different angles. And as I click on them, you can kind of see the different effects that it's having. This one, it had kind of a blue hue to it, over down here. That light, it had a light <coughs> a blue view, so it kind of gives the, that cooler color. No one's got lights that are four different colors. So if you really wanted to accent the, what, the color on each face, facing different directions. So there's a, a few others. So let's just pick this desktop. Done. Oh. We can also look at how we want the shadows to appear. We want hard lines, we want soft lines on the shadows. What, what quality we want that light to, the, no, the shadow to be. And then here we can change the position of the lights. We can also go out here and look at where those lights are. See how far, though, far away those lights are, so there's a lot of overlap there. So I'm just going to be done. The scene is what, what do I want the background to look like? So, I want to put some some reflective planes down. You can see here, that's where that plane is.
based on the different axes. And here I can do my offset, so if I wanted that to be, because I drew my part, the top of the part at zero, so right now the, the plane's on the top of it. So that might be good if I wanted to flip it. But if I want to leave it there, I can decrease this offset. So I'll pick that, that the X, XZ ground plane, so, and it's down there. A gradient. I'm not sure when you would actually re reflect it. Or... I'll do the reflector instead. So the reflections are turned on. If I wanted to set up cameras, and that's mainly for use in animations, because then you can move the camera. Do that there. Um, I'm just going to get render image. I want to see what this looks like. Now I can tell it what size do I want. I want to pick one of the preset sizes, so I'll pick 800 by 600. Here, I can also specify them here, or I can use curve views, which is what I just set up. So, easy to do that. And then the render type. Do I want it more for like an illustration or do I want it shaded? So I'm going to do shaded. Um, I'll put, do I just want to look down the screen first or do I want to save it right away? I like to, to see it first and then I can save it if I want to. Um, and then how do I want an AIA list? And that's when there's, yeah, I see it all the time in AutoCAD. When you draw a line at an angle, it kind of steps. And AIA list is, how do we want those steps to be? Do we want them to be rough steps? Or do you want to break them into little little boxes um, to make it more of a smooth line? <coughs> Which sometimes is good. It takes a lot longer to do, um, but so, and sometimes you can actually cause things not to look quite as crisp because it kind of softens it. This will make it look crisper, and it takes less time. So we're going to leave it there for now. And then yeah, we want to use the true reflection. So hit render. And where did my plane go? I guess I didn't pick that on. So now I can see the reflection underneath. I can see that there. You can see the texture of it. On here, I can see some machine surface. So, maybe I don't like that machine surface there. That's not really what I want. Something other, it'd probably it'd show the reflection. Maybe I'll pick a different. Why does it have the 
the line in the middle right there and then the reflection on the bottom, like farther down. Um, it was like two different, like, you see that, like the dark Yeah, color? that's a good question. Shadow. Is that the shadow up there? Yeah, that might be that. Yeah, that was, that was a shadow right at the plane. So that looks a little better. And that top just doesn't look right, though. I can give kind of an image of what this would actually look like. Um. <coughs> All right. Um. If I go over here, if I want to do an animation, I'd go to animation timeline. So say yes. It's not going to tell it kind of what do I want it to do. So I want to do a camera. So I need to make a camera. So I want him to do it. I want to look at look at the side. So I want to tell it to look at that side. Now where I want it to locate. How far in now? Now if I click on it, I can go to move. So right click on it, move. Now I can move it up. Set my view to the camera. That's net. So what I'm really going to do is delete that camera. Figure out a view that I like. And I'm going to create a camera from the view. That looks a little bit better. So now it's kind of where I was. So now I'm going to animate my camera. I'm going to use a turntable around the camera. So now if I just go back down here, collect camera one, and I hit play, it's going to take 10 seconds to go around the park. That means one every thing. So I'm just going to Yeah, one revolution every time. So when I go to 10 seconds, it's all the way around. I had 
and my origin is somewhere else, then it would move better. Um, or if I told that to go around, then it's then it's going based on the camera. So I really would have wanted to move the origin somewhere else if I could. <coughs> um, here's how it's starting and stopping the speed. Um, so the origin starts where where we start to draw it. Draw that. Um, the origin is the origin. <coughs> yeah, I know the origin. Of the origin, but I'm, the origin. Is, you're not. It doesn't let you go to the center of the drawing. No, you don't. Because is, is that where it started? You started to draw that picture yep. right there in that origin. That's why that creates that origin right there. Yep. And so, um, an easy way to do that would be to put this into an assembly and move it over. So that now the origin's in the middle, and then you can. Then it'd be easy to do it. Um, Or just deliver that. Uh, so that's that's that. So I'm going to let you guys put that that today. So pick a part or a couple parts that they've done so far, done so far, and and work on doing this. Adding some materials, playing the materials, playing the lights, the styles. You go back into the lights and move them around if you want to. Uh, see how that affects it. Uh, here, you do some basic animation. On Wednesday, we'll talk about uh, doing animations for assemblies. Okay? Questions?